Hello, everybody. Gage says it's empty. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, thanks a bunch for stopping by, I do appreciate it. Today's beer comes from Treehouse Brewing. Yay! That usually means this is going to be pretty tasty. This is a great big 16 ounce can with a wraparound stick on label like they normally do. Unless they got a special edition they put in bottles like we had the other day. Uh, I'm always impressed by what comes out of that brewery, guys. Uh, don't think I've had a bad beer from there. I don't think they make one. Uh, using their eight category beers. Uh, this is an American Imperial Porter. So, uh, not an IPA or a double IPA or anything. This is an Imperial Porter coming in at 8.80%. This was sent to me by my brother Greg, and he writes he's, that he picked this up at the brewery, and uh, he said this is this is uh, one of the porters from them. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm looking forward to this beer. This usually, I mean, when I get something from Treehouse, it, it's usually impressive, guys. So uh, I don't have a commercial description or an IBU because uh, they don't tell us uh, the IBUs on their beers. I don't think I've ever had an IBU count on any of their beers, so they're kind of keeping that information secret. Uh, and depending on the hopping techniques, uh, a lot of it's irrelevant. But this is a porter, so. I don't think they're doing anything crazy with the hopping process, but they just don't want you to know that information, evidently. Uh, so, uh, it does have the alcohol on the bottom of it, and uh, the date uh, is right on the bottom of it there. It's 5-2019, so uh, today is 6-7-2019, so uh, a little over two weeks old. So, pretty damn fresh, pretty impressive. Uh, as far as fresh beers that I get sent to me by Greg and his family that contributed to the packages uh, that he sent me last time. So thanks a bunch to everybody up there. Uh, that's all we need to talk about. So uh, let's get this thing opened up. It is sweating profusely. And I'm glad I am not because it's been kind of cool today and very, very rainy. So into the glass we go. We're going to kick it up a notch here. See if we can develop a nice creamy head on top of this beer. I'm not going to be able to get it all into the glass on this initial pour, but we will do that before I go off camera. Uh, about a finger and a half, half, half of uh, uh, head. Nice khaki colored, uh, very dark beer. Looks like a stout. It may be a little bit of light rubiness around the thin part of the glass down here. But fairly dark. Looks very much like a porter. And this is an imperial at 8.8%. So to the nose we go. Wow. Roasted malt. Hints of coffee. I'm getting coffee notes on it. Chocolate. Molasses. Very impressed with the amount of coffee notes that's on there. Uh, let's see if it says anything. You got a sturdy base of chocolate caramel and roasted malts and gently hop with warrior abstraction presents your flavors and aromas of chocolate syrup, fudge, and creamy coffee. So, and I am definitely getting the coffee. So, uh, if they brewed it with coffee, uh, you want to drink it as fresh as possible, guys. It smells awesome. Smells absolutely awesome. Very creamy head on, on the top of that beer. Very impressive looking. Very impressive smelling. This sip is impressive tasting. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Greg. Very smooth. Very smooth. A little bit thinner than what a stout's going to be, but that's, you're going to get that from a porter, usually. The coffee notes are definitely prominent on that. 
I'd be damn surprised if they're getting that much coffee notes from the amount of malt they've used. So this may have been brewed with some coffee. Chocolate, cocoa, molasses. Very damn tasty. Very, very damn tasty. I'm always impressed with what these guys do up there. Let's get it back in pour on this one so I can go out and sip on it for a while. That's a smooth beer for an 8.8%. Alcohol is very, very, very well hidden. So, just always am impressed with what I receive that's sent to me from this brewery. And I think everything they do is brewery released. I don't think they distribute anything. People stand in line and get their hands on these beers. And I can understand why, because you, you know you're gonna get a good beer. You're not gonna buy something that's gonna be transitional or, or, or a bad beer. So, let's step on this, let it come up to room temperature, and we'll come back and see where it ends up. Hello everybody. Back, got a little bit of nice lacing that's left on the glass. Big time coffee notes on this beer. Uh, it is a porter, so it's a little thin on the mouthfeel, not quite as creamy as the stouts usually are. But I do think this is a very tasty beer. Uh, not quite, in my humble opinion, to a 10 category, but a definitely a well-made porter. Uh, alcohol super well hidden, big time coffee notes, roasted malt, uh, a little bit of chocolate and cocoa in there. It's not off the chain, uh, but... Uh, a very well made beer, a very tasty beer, and a beer that I would probably buy if I could get it here. Uh, but I don't think it's quite to the 10 category, so let's do the final chug on this one. Very tasty beer, guys. If you like coffee, you'll probably like this beer. Especially if you like a darker beer. A lot of people are afraid of the dark. They're scared of the dark. Uh, you pour that in there and you say, I ain't drinking that motor oil. Uh, but if you like a, a darker beer, whether it's a porter or a stout, and you like coffee, you'll like this. It doesn't have the creamy, thicker body, mouthfeel that a lot of the stouts have, but it's a porter. So uh, that's to be expected. But not quite to the King category in my opinion, uh, but that's just my opinion. You might think, oh my God, that's the best thing I ever tasted. And I wouldn't argue with that, guys. I would not argue a bit. I'm usually very, very impressed. And most of their beers are either A's or A pluses. Uh, and I think this is an A beer, and that's where I'm gonna put it. 95, right down the middle of the A category. Definitely worth picking up and I would buy it. And that's the biggest recommendation that I would give a beer or could give a beer. If I would spend my money on it, it's usually pretty impressive. So, with that being said, let's run over to Beer Advocate, see what they say. They have it at 4.18. That's in their B, that's in their A minus range. Uh, and they're calling it exceptional, and it is an exceptional beer. It's very tasty. Definitely worthy of picking up if you like this style of beer. Uh, Untapped has it at 4.14. Uh, again, also in their A minus range. So I'm giving it a solid A because I think it deserves it. Uh, the big time coffee notes is what impresses me so much on this beer. Uh, a lot of coffee flavor in this beer. So if you like coffee and you like a darker beer, like I said, uh, you'll probably like this beer. And if you're in the vicinity where they're at, uh, like I said, they don't distribute it. Everything is from the brewery. And a lot of times uh, there is a line you have to stand in to get the beers and they have a limit on what you can buy because they're trying to let everybody get a little bit of it instead of having 10 people going and buying everything they've got. So uh, if you can get your hands on it, pick it up, give it a try, trade somebody something, uh, if you see something like this available or anything from this brewery, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, they do some awesome stuff and this is pretty tasty. Not quite to the 10, but definitely an A to me. So that being said, if you've had their abstraction, Treehouse Brewing, let me know what you think. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.